Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm gonna start doing it in golf what I've been doing in MMA to great success. And that is, I'm gonna be doing a kind of early look at the slate before ownership comes piling in. Um, and before I, you know, get poisoned by the industry and things like that, um, just to give you an idea of at least on, on numbers, right? Where I think ownership should go, right? Who I think should be the good plays. And then as ownership comes in, you know, sometime between now when I record with Bobby, we'll be able to, you know, really come up with the good GPP plays, right? So right now is just who the best plays are, I think, um, you know, either point per dollar using my value scores and things like that. And this is without anything, without any ownership involved. And it'll give us a chance to see who we think should be high owned. And then when ownership does come in, I'm curious to see what actually happens. Um, so I'm gonna do this tier by tier again. And interestingly, or maybe not so interestingly, the, the, the top plays are from the top of the board. Um, I, I see that the, there are five guys all in the 10K range who, for at least the way I rank them, are almost dead equal. Um, and it's basically everybody except for um, Sam Burns. Like I have Sam Burns significantly lower than all these guys, almost unplayable. Um, so I'm curious to see where ownership kind of follows that. The, but what's interesting is that all the other guys in the range, Cantlay, Shoffley, McElroy, Thomas, Scheffler, I have them all pretty well equal, um, salary adjusted and things like that. So what I'm looking to accomplish is that if I do get one of these guys with an ownership projection of maybe five clicks you know, below another one, like if I have one guy that might be 20%, another guy 15, that's good enough for me to just really just just a pound on that 15% guy. Um, but relative to the rest of the field, I mean, these guys do are rating to be pretty good values here. Um, so that is something to consider. Um, the 9K range, let me just scroll down here and see how many we're dealing with here. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine golfers in the nine Ks. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them, maybe six and a half rated pretty high. Okay. So, so uh, the nine K range looks pretty good too, but let me, let me see who I don't have and what, you know, how close they are. I, mean, I have the top three being Finau, Neiman and M in this range. Um, uh, I have them almost equal actually, um, Finau, Neiman, and, and M. So we, again, we're gonna look at ownership and see if between those three, you might get you know reduced ownership between uh, 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 on one of them, you know? But they all look pretty good. Then I have a little bit of a drop not much, but a little bit of a drop to Keegan Bradley. And then another decent drop to this combination of power and speed. Um, I think that Varner is probably going to be the odd man out. And the other one who, you know, Bobby's going to kill me on this, but he's just not showing up for me is, is, uh, is Tommy Fleetwood. And what's interesting is that I've heard on Rick's podcast that he's particularly good on the Pete Dye courses. So you have to decide what matters to you. But from a numbers perspective, I wouldn't expect him to garner too much ownership. And then, as usual, Brooks Kepo kept the rates really poorly. So um, of these nine Ks, I think Varner's on the outside looking in. I'm not going to probably get to Fleetwood, nor am I going to get to Kepka. And the rest are playable, and it's just – you know, where ownership comes in. But again, if I was ranking these, at least now, it would be Neiman, well, Neiman and Finau and M are all pretty well the same as far as I'm concerned. All right. Um, 
under 9K. You got about 12 guys over there. Let me see how they, those guys kind of stack up. So I have one guy here, well, three guys that stand out. And really the only three guys I like in the range. And one of them is extremely strong um, in my overall values. And that would be Mito Pereira. Um, he is going to, I would imagine, he would end up being a, a pretty popular play just because of the way he stands out on my sheets, you know, and if he stands out on my sheets, he's probably going to stand out on most of the industry sheets as well. Um, so I would expect to see Mito as an extremely high owned, you know, kind of mid range play. If he's not, I mean, then it's, you know, you know what to do. And then the other two I have are, are Brian Harmon and Aaron Wise. And Brian Harmon is also particularly good. I, I heard in, in the PTI courses, and Aaron Wise always seems to get ownership um, because he's really talented. So all three of these guys rate to be pretty strong plays for me. And I guess interesting is that none of the other guys kind of make my list. Um, I'm probably not going to get to much of any of these others, whether it be Davis Riley, Webb Simpson, Mark Leishman, Denny McCarthy, Keith Mitchell, or Jason Day, or Jason Kokrak. So that is one thing is that I, I'm finding the 8K range be very concentrated between those three guys, um, Mito, Harmon, and Wise. Um, then when you go underneath, you go to the under 8Ks. And first of all, how many do you have? You got, uh, you got like a bunch of them. One thing I noticed, again, just the eye test, it's kind of bizarre when you look at it all the way down here. But if I'm not mistaken, Oh, yeah, Ricky Fowler is a flat 7K. That's like, that's that's amazing in a way, right? Um, now, this that's without me kind of looking at the numbers or anything like that. I just kind of noticed that when I was going through that Ricky Fowler is under 7K, 7K flat below all these other guys. I think he's kind of out-earned the entire 7K field, maybe. Actually, that's not true. Um, so the guy who's standing out, in the 7K range, and, I, it, and he's going to be really high old, I think, um, is going to be Brandon Steele. Um, he, he's a, a big-time model darling, and, and he's a big course fit here, too. And He's showing up for me as in a just extremely strong play. And like I said, showing up for me really strong, I would, I would hope and imagine that he's showing up for the industry is really strong, too. So... I'm going to expect a good amount of ownership from him. And if you don't get it, then, then that's a, just a ridiculous play. Um, and then you have your usual group of 7K guys. Um, not your usual group, but they're all kind of close to one another. I, I'll, I'll just kind of read off what, who I have. Um, below, and this is all below, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Steel. And Steel is light years ahead of everybody else, for some I'm concerned. But then there's Siwoo Kim, uh, Tringali, K.H. Lee. Actually, I can separate these a little bit. I have Siwoo Kim and Tringali a little bit higher than the next group, which is K.H. Lee and Bezadenhut. And then a slight drop to the to the Domin play. And then you're into guys I might not get to, like, like Vegas, Luke List, Hoagie, McNeely, Brandon Todd. Brandon Todd will probably get, get, some, get some love this week. But for me, Brendan Steele is going to be a staple of, of most of most lineups this week. I would I would imagine. Um, so for me, it's Brendan Steele, see who Kim and Tringali, and see kind of where ownership kind of comes in. And with respect to the under seven Ks, I mean, I I really don't like any of them. You, know, you have to get down to like the 50th rated golfer in my value scores to get to any of them. And that would be Russell Knox, Eric Van Ruyen, Lucas Glover. I mean, all these guys are okay, but I don't, I prefer to not get to them. Um, one thing I can do just for fun is I can run a, um, a saber sim build given my current projections and see what it would come up with. So let's do that. Um, let's just let's just do it completely live. So let's let's go into um, 
Did I upload the, the let's, let's see if I did. I don't even know if I uploaded it yet. Let's just take a look. Um, if I did not upload them, let's see, PGA projections. This is the true DFS site where I upload my sheets. Um, no, I did not upload them yet. Um, but so what I have to do is I have to go into, into Sabresim directly. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run just a, just a projection build. Like I'm not gonna run anything, you know, um, uh, with ownership or any, anything like that. I just wanna see, given my numbers, where I think we would come out. So let's, let's, let's select ownership anyway. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll build them um, manually. We'll build with um, no ownership fade, we're just gonna do this, just like the, the 150 best kind of lineups, okay? Just rated by what's good, what's what's optimal, you know, their median projections. And then what I wanna do, I wanna, you know, let's have some fun while I'm doing this. Then I'm gonna do another one using whatever ownership I have now and, and, and that that type of thing. So as, as I suggested, um, Brandon Steele, rates to be would rate to be the highest owned golfer um given you know, given my numbers and that makes sense and you'll see all the guys that i talked about in here cameron tringali siwoo kim mito Pereira, um and then these 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 10k guys i talked about shot play can't play and there's Harmon in there um so not surprisingly you know when you build you're getting the guys that i that i talked about and what's cool is that you don't have to get to any of these six Ks to make it work. Um, so uh, that's what's to expect. And then when you get your ownerships in, then what you could do is let's let's give you an example. If we change this and we give it a little bit of an ownership fade, we'll go a little ownership fade and a little more variance. If we ran 150, you know, that way. I would imagine that the results are going to be somewhat different. Let's see. So if we do ownership fade, then yeah, now, now we got Mark Leishman at the top of the list. I don't know why. Um, and you get a lot of Brooks Kepka, you know, because what they do is when you, when you run it with high sim variance is that it kind of takes its favorite result, you know, anything that makes your lineup the high, you know, the, the most upside. So you just get different golfers, and different styles of lineups when you when you set the saber some sliders off to the right, so to speak. That's for another day, but uh, that is uh, going to do it. That's the early look at the salaries and and, and you know projections, I guess, um, for the travelers. And and when ownership comes in, and Bobby and I talk about it, we'll kind of reduce these to more you know not just who their good plays are, but who the good tournament plays are which may be or maybe the same or maybe different. That'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody.